Good morning, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. As we're about to begin, I would like to ask for your... Yes, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As we're about to begin, I would like to ask for your cooperation in completing this class today. Please make sure your microphone on Zoom is turned off to avoid interference. Thank you for your keen cooperation and attention. And welcome to our special lecture today, Mr. Mohamad Juraj Spin Abdurrahni from University of Malaysia, Perlis, as a lecturer from Faculty of Business and Communication. And I hope this lecture can provide useful and significant experience in our education, especially in developing the quality of student as inter-university. Thank you all for being here with us today. Also, thank you to all the participants for attending this online class. We hope you will learn a lot of today. We have prepared for you useful and interesting. And then further for Morning Agenda Square, we will be opened by a special lecturer today. And after that, we will enter the Q&A session. And then this session will be ending. Yeah, thank you so much for joining in our event. Yeah, so Mr. Jurates Ibnu Rahni, you can start for this class today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vita, for introducing me and uh, the, my organization. So today I will be sharing uh, about uh, our topic on facing the changing in business world uh, in the VUCA, uh, VUCA world. So be, before we start, I will share the PowerPoint slide. Okay, thank you very much. I'm Jim Raj from uh, Faculty of Business and Communication. So the topics that has been given uh, and suggested to me is to address on uh, the dynamic business world that are uh, uh, facing the VUCA challenge uh, currently we are facing. So before we go further, how do we face all the changing business ideas, the changing business uh, challenges? Uh, we are going to address on what it what it is actually in the VUCA world. So and what is VUCA? How do we face VUCA? And then how do we go about? And what is important for us as a person to face this situation? So I will do my best to mix uh, my presentation. Uh, so if you have any clarification that you need me to address, you, you can just simply, maybe you can, uh, if it's permitted, you may simply ask, uh, or you can just left the question in the chat box. Okay. Okay, uh, overall, we try to understand the impact of VUCA and what is happening in today's world. And then we'll try to understand the practical marketing tools or business uh, analysis tools that we can uh, use to analyze the situation, to come out with proper uh, solution so that we are capable of addressing the issue that we currently have in the VUCA world. So, and then the next is we try to find a critical uh, awareness uh, on how do we go about the analytical process we can use to identify the market opportunities. Because in every challenge, there will be an opportunity. In every limitation, there will be a strength that we can use that because we, we will have something that we can capitalize, we can leverage, we can address, and uh, make full use on what we want to achieve, to achieve our business objective, to achieve our uh, entrepreneurial uh, objective. We will have a capability to face all the challenges, but we need to identify the core problem, the core issues, so that we can address it uh, correctly and find the uh, exact solution that we can use to address the issue. And then we, uh, in during this lecture, we will find uh, about the appropriate marketing strategies that we can use to achieve the competitive advantage in current uh, global and dynamic market context. So what is VUCA? 
uh, the term is actually it, this is not a new term. Uh, buka has been actually used by the military uh, and actually used since the 1980s. So it has been used for decades already, and it's not a new term, but it is practical uh, in the context of today's world because buka is actually the army term referring to their situation. As an army, they are facing a volatile world, volatile situation where the change is rapid and unpredictable, and uh, they are facing uncertainty during their field operation. For example, they are unclear of what is uh, what they are facing in the future. So uh, imagine you are an army, you're going into the enemy line, you don't exactly know what is in the enemy line. You might have some intel. That, uh, that has been given to you, but that it doesn't mean that you can actually address it uh, as actual, uh, oh, the screen is partially closed, all right? So what about now? Is it okay? Can you see this the slides properly? Uh, actually, no, sir, yeah, because, see. yeah, can you close your screen display in PowerPoint because it's your cover, uh, close your PowerPoint. Sorry. Yeah. What about right now? Um, same with, same. Let me address it. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm ready sending capture in your WhatsApp, or maybe you can see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, something is blocking the box. Wait. Is it blocking? Uh under complex you still have a box yes. um, sorry for the hiccup i try to address it Let me increase. Or maybe we can helping with the uh, share screen from there from our set, sir. Uh, wait, uh, sure. If you can share it from your side, uh, that would be good. Do you want I me to send it? To you? Yes, you can share in my WhatsApp chat. Okay. Untuk para partisipan, mohon ditunggu sebentar karena ada kendala isu. Terima kasih.
Okay, send it. Just a moment, please. We will download your file and we'll share the screen. Sudah terlihat belum, Mbak? Oke. Okay. Langsung okay. next slide. Okay, in the book uh, next. slides. Next? Yes, next. Yes, here. Thank you very much. And again, uh, I apologize for the uh, hiccups on our lecture series today. So, go back to the context of uh, an army. Because the term of UCA is coined by the army uh, back in the United States, where they are addressing the issues that they faced in their field during the battlefield. So they are facing a volatile situation when uh, the change is uh, unpredictable. The change is instantly, and you cannot, you will not be able to expect what is coming uh, during the uh, the battlefield. And also in the battlefield, it is uncertain. You don't know what's behind the enemy line and you don't actually have any idea what will be, uh, what, is what will happen in every action that you're going to take. And also the situation is complex during the battlefield. And when uh, we are in the battlefield, the situation is, uh, is not something that we, can, we may we may be able to plan in advance, but when we are in the actual battlefield, we, the situation will have some interconnected uh, factors, variables that can come into play and influence. And we have to make sudden changes of our, uh, of our plan, or sudden changes uh, of our strategies that we may not be able to inform our uh, partner or our team during the battlefield. So this can cause chaos and confusion even among the team members. So uh, the next one is ambiguous. The A in VUCA is ambiguous because we don't really know, we don't have a clarity of what is happening. Let's say in the in a battlefield, you know that is something is happening, someone is pulling the trigger, but you don't actually know where's the trigger, who's the attacker, who's the enemy, where are they located. We don't know about that. So that is ambiguous situation. Now, apply this, what is happening in the battlefield into what we are facing currently uh, by the business world, where previously we may be able to have a business plan, we may be able to have a marketing plan, we may uh, execute all these plans uh, better, or we, we may be able to address all the uh, challenges uh, that comes after we implement the plan and make a uh, necessary amendment during the, uh, this, the, the, the time, the, the, the challenges uh, period. But what, with what is happening nowadays, we have clear understanding that we don't actually have control over everything at all not norm, normal we don't actually have every any plan we cannot just face the work that we are doing uh, previous the way we pre doing previously uh, but we need to face it just like how this army are uh, facing their battlefield we need to uh, uh, we need to address the issues just like how this 
uh, army is facing it during the battlefield. So that is Buka. And to the next slide. Uh, these are the global events that prove to us that we are actually facing a VUCA world because we, do, we are facing financial crisis around the world. We are facing a hyperinflation. Uh, we are after this post pandemic uh, COVID uh, issues, COVID pandemic. And we know right now we have Ukraine conflict, we have Taiwan conflict, which we may not be able to have our uh, hands in controlling the situation. We may not be able to influence the, uh, the situation, but it is influencing us. It has significant uh, effect to our business, uh, business world, to the whole world's business situation, but we don't actually have direct control over it. We may be able to use any soft power, for example, but that does not mean that it will make any change yet. So uh, these are some of an example. And even let's take, for example, the climate change, for example. And, and recently, we are, uh, they have, uh, the British have new uh, king. Uh, so those are things that is happening around the world, which proves that we don't actually have control over all of this, for example. Because if uh, the climate uh, issues, for example, we have uh, drought around and flood around the world unexpected somehow. Uh, the, where the places it has not, uh, we even in Malaysia, we have, uh, we have flood issues in places we have no flood issues previously. For the past 40 years, we don't face it. So uh, these are the kind of example what we are facing. We are facing volatility, we are facing uncertainty, we are facing complexity and we are facing ambiguous in the ambiguous to understand what is happening and what is uh, and how we do how do we go about all these challenges okay to the next slide okay so when this happens how does it affect us because no matter when i referring to us because no matter how good the business is, how big the business, or how uh, big the customers are, behind every business and behind every purchasing power is actually people. It's actually a person who have emotions, who have uh, ability to think, who needs to comprehend and understand the situation before and uh, they come up with their decision. So these people are affected by the VUCA environment. For example, uh, one of the significant way, these are some of the uh, uh, effects of the VUCA environment to people. For, for, for a start, for example, VUCA environment makes people feel uneasy and unstable. You don't feel comfortable because you don't actually have control over everything. Uh, not, ju uh, not just, you don't have total control on your decision. You, your decision is subject to the challenges that you may or may not know. So that's make people feel uneasy and unstable. And then this reduce their drive, their motivation, the potential uh, motivation to make decision, to going further, to going forward, this will be affected by the VUCA environment. And for, because of this, people, some of, not some, most people, because of this, we can see the numbers of uh, depression disorder, anxiety disorder is increasing in today's world. Not just because we currently are able to identify that we are facing uh, emotional disorders in this, um, in our, among our uh, community, but we actually have increased number of um, uh, anxiety and uh, depression disorder among the community members, then some are affected by VUCA environment, which some of them even stop to make their career plans. They just go about what they want to do. And this also make them 
uh, eventually changing, keep changing and training uh, to face the necessity to uh, so that to make something for them. They cannot focus on things that they love. The ikigai, ikigai, for example, matching something that you love and making it uh, an income, making it your living, uh, living a passion is may not be possible at all because it takes a lot of time and effort for them to fight the situation, to face our every situation, to each every situation. Now imagine like this, you are playing a game and that game doesn't motivate you and that game is so challenging, it demotivates you to play, to finish the game. Uh, so that's how VUCA is affecting us uh, uh, as a business person. And even if we are not a business person, it will have an effect to us. But for business person, it is more a lot more significant and a lot more challenging to the business person because they need to plan, they need to face, they need, they have mouth to feed, not just mouth to feed, but they have staff to address and they have suppliers to, uh, uh, suppliers to, the, uh, they need to fulfill and also the customers that they need to address. So there are a lot of stakeholders involving the business person. And because of this, it, somehow increase the chances of people making bad decisions. Uh, some people are, are asking how can a bad situation, bad uh, situation affects us in making, supposedly in bad situations, we come out with better decisions. But why did in Buka environment, in bad situation like, like we are facing right now, we are doing, we are coming up with bad decisions. Uh, I would give an example that, let's say now, uh, for people who are in the, uh, who are deprived of poverty, who are facing poverty, for example, it's not that they, they know when you are buying in bulk, when you are doing a bulk purchase, you can enjoy the better price per unit uh, when you buy in bulk purchase. So in other words, now let's say if you are buying food, you're buying it in bulk, you will enjoy a cheaper price for each unit because you are buying in bulk instead of you buying it for every single one. But because of these people don't have a chance, they have to prioritize their financial, they don't have a capability to make that decision, that good decision that could save their money. Because having um, the money to face uh, current needs is more important than stocking up uh, necessities item uh, so that they can enjoy a cheaper price. So that is an example of how the, 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 the situation, the VUCA environment that they have to fight the VUCA environment uh, influence them in making bad decisions. And this also uh, happens to be uh, paralyzing the decision making process. So, so I'm taking the game example, when you're playing a very challenging program, sometimes you may make a, a worse decision and it somehow may paralyze your decision making. You may not be able to come up with a decision. You may choose to ditch the game, you may choose not to make any decision at all and you just want to face what is coming up to you. Uh, so that is an example of how effects of uh, VUCA environment. And also in terms of uh, long-term projects, developments and innovation in the bigger context now, let's say the government may have, may not be able to pursue, uh, to pursue any planned development or any, the, even the business world may have a uh, challenge in facing and uh, executing the long-term projects. It is good if the long-term project need a little longer time to complete, but what is uh, worrying if the project is being terminated so that it is not uh, implemented and it is not being carried carried out so for the benefit of the organization or benefit of the stakeholders. Okay, this 
And these issues, all these issues overwhelm individuals and organizations. Because behind any organizations, business or not, is individuals, is a people, person who have emotions and who have uh, 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 who have a mind who can take uh, who can make decisions but are affected by the situations. So this can somehow influence the internal culture of any organization. So uh, for any organization, it's, it's important for them to address VUCA effects in their team members so as not to let the VUCA environments bleed in the organizations, which means we, have facing, we are facing VUCA in the macro context, but we don't want it to happen internally in the organization. In the organization now let's say if you have company take care of the company uh, so as to avoid the VUCA environment to bleed inside the company which may influence the team members in the in your company in your organization uh, from all the effects that have, I have shared uh, earlier in this slide okay thank you uh, so next one we look at the The, this is how, basically, this is from uh, Harvard Business Review and a guide in approaching all four categories of VUCA uh, in facing the, uh, we go one by one now, let's go to the volatility. Now, these are the metrics that we can use to face the VUCA categories uh, on the X axis, it is about how much do we know about the situation, and on the Y axis, it's about how well do, uh, how well can we predict the results of actions that we take. Uh, so, in terms of volatility, because volatility is about uh, uh, dynamic change, it's about things that we don't know. So, we have unexpected or unstable situation that we don't know. So the approach to address the volatility is to make sure that we address and gain as much as possible information uh, that we have uh, to prepare for the situation. Now, uh, taking the uh, army in the battlefield, for example, they need to know how much, uh, uh, they need to know as much as possible about their enemy before they address uh, the, for them to address the volatility in the situation of the battlefield. So, for example, here, the, in this example, they take, for example, the price fluctuation after a natural uh, disaster, for example. Now, let's say if uh, there's a hurricane that is happening, there will be a shortages in supplies, which eventually will affect the price fluctuation, especially on the uh, necessity items on food, on clothes, on, on ne necessities item that uh, each household require. So this can be addressed uh, by typically uh, controlling the price of uh, the items and intervention by the government, for example. So that's how you address on volatility. Now on uncertainty, it is about uh, in uncertainty, we don't know about uh, we don't know what will happen uh, as a result from our actions. We don't really know about, but we know a lot about. We have much many information on uh, on uh, what we know about the situation. Now that's uncertainty. So the lack of information is. Uh, the basic cause of why we are uncertain. Uh, but in this situation, we need to address in terms of gaining as much information as possible, collecting information, interpreting the information, and share the information with the team members. This is the best way to address the uncertainty. This works best in conjunction with structural changes, such as, for example, if you have uh, any additional information, you have an analysis network, 
that can reduce the uncertainty. So basically, put it simply, to address uncertainty, we need to know about situation. So in this, uh, as in this context, for this category, the example is a competitor spending product. You don't know what the competitor will, let's say you are rolling out new products from your company and you don't know whether your competitor is coming up with better products or not. So the key is to gain as many, as much information that you can possibly gain, but at the same time, address the product uh, introduction, the new product uh, introduction properly in a way that you are still ahead of the market uh, compared to your competitors by knowing as many information that you can get as possible. Knowing information may not be about the competitor, your competitor, for example, but about your customer, what your customer really wants. So these are the key essential uh, competitive advantage that many of the established uh, businesses in the world are focusing on. They empathy, they put focus on uh, the customer instead of the put focus on what the competitor is doing. Uh, they know about the competitor, they know these are the, they know who are their competitor, but they don't focus much on the competitor, but focus on addressing the needs and wants of the uh, customers. Okay, so next one is complexity. Uh, complexity is uh, when you you know that the situation that the, that we are facing is interconnected. Uh, interconnected by uh, with a lot of other uh, other variables that may uh, may some may affect it that we may have control or may not have control. So these are the complexity we are facing because every decision that we make may somehow influence another decision or another parties or another uh, action that we are taking. So we, the, uh, so we face a situation where we, we, we cannot predict uh, what, we got, what will happen we cannot predict how it will, uh, uh, how it, uh, how, what is the effect or the influence that the, our decision, our action is taking on the issue. So if you are doing business uh, in many countries, for example, so you know uh, each of the countries are having, well, uh, are having different values, different uh, tax, uh, implementation, different uh, environment. So addressing each and every uh, complex situation may be tiring. So in order to approach it, you need to restructure. For example, for some, for now let's take, for example, the complexity example that has been shared uh, in the slides. Uh, if you are doing business in many countries, you know each of the country that you uh, join, uh, the, that you address is having different regulatory environments, different tariffs, and each have different cultural values. So we may need to restructure that. So when, what do we mean by restructuring is we need to address, for example, if you are addressing uh, to the uh, Middle East, for example, you have one representative who can represent and understand and address all the needs based on the different continents in the world, for example, if you are doing business in different uh, countries. Okay, the next one and the, uh, the next one in VUCA is ambiguity. So the causal relationship are completely unclear where you don't know, you confuse and you, uh, you don't really able to make any decision uh, and in this situation we can take an example where you move immature and emerging market or you launch a new product outside of your core competencies now example uh, that we can use is let's say you are producing uh, you are a company producing bread for example now you are trying to come up with a new products uh, if you are producing bread, so 
that means you your core business is uh, something related to bakery for example uh, if you are coming up with new product uh, you are selling you are selling cake for example that is still related so that is okay but what if you are trying to do uh, a business in detergent so you are uh, introducing soap uh, hand wash soap shampoo or uh, personal any other personal care uh, and even uh, for dish washing so for example that is outside of the business for competencies so this is an ambiguity situation you may be you may somehow want to venture something out of your comfort zone something out of your core business competencies for the time being but because you see uh, maybe the reason you choose to do that is because you see the lucrative uh, future of that business or that industry so this is an example of ambiguity you know that you don't you don't really know about because this is a new business for example so you are doing it so is for this kind of situation this kind of categories it is better to experiment by understanding the cause and effect of each decision that you make so it is a good idea to take it lightly take now let's say uh, this the, the same example if you are venturing into new business that is out of your core competencies that is out of your core business uh, strategic business unit you may want to venture venture it uh, safely now first thing provided that you are conducting a feasibility study for example now from the feasibility study you find it uh, you find this business uh, this business has potential has a lucrative poten uh, future for the business uh, to be carried out so now let's say if you're venturing into it you take it likely take it step by step so that you have your you can learn from the, any decision that you make so this is a, a important to design the experiment so that the lesson can be uh, can be uh, learned throughout the the rest of the business operation lah. Uh, because it's important uh, for any business not to venture it uh, in uh, 100% now let's say if you are doing business uh, if you are doing that uh, detergent or soap business for example you may want to start it carefully before you venture it uh, uh, venture and put a lot of money and effort on doing the new business so that is how we can address ambiguity okay so on the next slide uh, now I will address about uh, the way we can survive in the VUCA world, in that VUCA environment, uh, because we know change is inevitable. It, now, we are not talking about change. When we talk about VUCA world, it's not just about change, because change is certain. Change is happening even though without, uh, uh, whether we like it, like it or not, the change will happen. But in the context of VUCA world, we are not just talking about change because in facing changes, you may know things. Uh, you may have some, uh, the situation may be, uh, maybe you may have more, a lot more information and it's not vulnerable, it's not uncertain, it's not complex, it's not ambiguous. ambiguous. But when we are talking about change, in VUCA world, it is uh, it is inevitable. Now, let's say uh, you're going to change in your business. You are doing business. You have uh, now you have a clothes factory, for example. You are producing uh, clothes, uh, shirts, pants, and uh, for the brands you do OEM, for example. Uh, you are doing that business. You can change. You need to change. You know. There will be times when people may not may no longer wear uh, cotton-based uh, clothes, for example. So you need to change now. But when we talk about VUCA, it's not just about that. Now, what is happening to the uh, 
uh, closed factories, for example, what is happening to the closed factories when they are facing uh, the COVID pandemic? Uh, the staff cannot, uh, the, the staff is not allowed to work. And so there's no production during the pandemic. And they have to comply and they, uh, the, the factories have to comply and have to uh, still paying out the their employee. They still need to address to, uh, the all the bills that they get and the customers are asking. Because even though people are, well, during the pandemic, even though people are, uh, uh, are constrained to their house and not cannot move around, they still buy clothes somehow because they they need somehow they need some. Uh, for example, uh, let's say for example, if even when we are at home, we need to buy clothes. That uh, previously we may prioritize to buy clothes uh, for us to go to the uh, to go to go to the office to go out to the town, for example. But when we are constrained to our house, we want to buy clothes that is comfortable for us to stay in house. While at the, at the same time, look good when we are doing our presentation, when we are having our uh, online meetings, for example. So you cannot change, you cannot uh, avoid the COVID pandemic, for example. Now, if there is, uh, now let's take, let's take for example if there is any natural disaster you cannot avoid natural disaster but the effect can be lessened uh, so that's what i want to clear first it's not when we talk about wuka addressing wuka world it's not about change man, just change we are not talking about change management we are talking about how we try to avoid a situation where uh, the challenge comes and affected everyone for example uh, the pandemic for instance affected everyone affected all businesses affected all types of uh, industries so you cannot avoid pandemic and the same thing goes when natural disaster happen flood drought for example everyone in the continent everyone in the country will be affected uh, so it's not about change alone uh, it's about how you can lessen, how you can reduce the, the impact that uh, it has brought upon the businesses, the community, the, the surrounding uh, society. So how can we address that? So that is what we want to address in, in the context of Ruka world. So in this sense, uh, it's important for us to break down the VUCA the situation that we are facing into is each of the components or the categories that we talk about. We need to address it to the to the volatile. We need to identify whether it's on volatility. We need to identify about its uncertainty. We need to identify the uh, complexity and also the ambiguous nature of the uh, impact, the challenge that we are facing. So each problem comes with uh, their own causes and they will have their own solutions. So we need to handle, to address each problem one by one. So we are not overwhelmed by the situation, by the challenges that we face, okay? This, the, actually what I love about this is, it's not just about, we are not talking just about business how business can survive in buka world but also we are talking about us how do we we as a person as individual can survive in buka world so for every problem problem that we face they will they will have a solution they will certainly comes with solution uh, which we need to identify by addressing the issues based on each of the categories and we can use you know, for in the business context, we have strategies that we call VUCA positive prime to combat VUCA. Okay, uh, this will be on the next slide. The first one is volatility. So in facing the volatility, 
we try to change the volatility into vision because in volatility you when you are going into the battlefield that you are facing volatility you don't know where you are heading you don't know where you are going you don't know the outcome of that situation of the battle you may have an idea what do you want but you don't really have uh, an outcome uh, you don't you cannot really predict what will happen so in the context of volatility we change the volatility using the vuca prime to vision the first v is vision so what it means here it's important for us to first accept and embrace uh, embrace change that is happening we need to change for for example uh, uh let's say for previously during the pandemic we need to face the situation we need to understand that we have no way of uh, escaping the COVID unless we practice a good hygiene, for example. Good hygiene, we wear face masks. Um, before we come out, we have the vaccine. Th those are the things that we need. Uh, we need to practice uh, social distance, for example, where we as Asians previously, actually, we are, uh, we are very social community, our cultural values, uh, uh, social, uh, we want to sit right next to our uh, friends and families, we want to get in touch, we are close with people around us, especially the loved ones. But due to the COVID situation, we need to practice a proper social distance, we need to practice a proper hygiene, uh, hygiene practice that may not allow us even to shake hands with others, for example. So first thing first, in that sense, is we need to accept the situation and we need to embrace it, uh, that we need to change the way we deal. Because if not, the COVID wins. Uh, it's either COVID wins or it's us. Uh, so it's like that, for example. Okay, now we create, uh, and for business, it's important to track the situation, uh, to address the situation by creating a good, uh, uh, a good and excellent and compelling statement for team objectives and values. Because in business, they need to have a direction. The team members, now if you are a head of a company, if you are a head of the uh, organization, it's important for you to have a clear and compelling statement for your team because it's like you are going to the uh, you, because when you are in the battlefield the people will try to find who they can hang uh, who they can hang their hope to who are they are hoping who are they rooting so this will help them to guide through the situation to make decision without even uh, referring to the uh, the, the, the head because they already know where they are heading. Okay, so it's more not only just that the statement of team objective and values, but also it must be a shared and clear vision of what we together as a team want to achieve in the future. Okay, but this goal that we this goal this objective that we set must not be a fixed goals it must be a flexible goals that can be changed accordingly but somehow it is uh it is not a sim it is it is it is an actual uh, compelling statement but it must not be fixed so that your team members can help to uh can help to be uh, flexible uh, during in making the decision to achieve the goal okay and in order to do that uh, because of the unfamiliar unsettled situations uh, and they need to make decisions faster so that's why the goals must not just be compelling must not just be clear uh, and it must be a shared goals uh, and it also must be must be a flexible goals that all the team members agreed upon 
to achieve together. Uh, and then the next one is on the uncertainty. The next slide on uncertainty. So for uncertainty, we want to change from uncertainty to understanding. So in order to achieve that understanding, because first uncertainty is because you don't have, uh, you don't have information, you don't have ideas about what you are facing. So it's important to gain understanding about the situation that you are facing by investing in business and competitive intelligence. So it's important to have a, as, much, as many information, but I want to address here, it's not just any kind of information. The information that we need to gather is information that is significant and relevant to the organization or the business, because it's useless if we are having uh, information that is irrelevant to the context of our business operation, operation for example. And this, uh information or this intelligence that we have must be uh regularly reviewed and evaluated based on the performance of uh the performance of that intelligence that we have and also for businesses it's good to simulate and experiment with situations now let's say any uh situation that is facing uh if you are in uh facing a change, for example, now let's say in the future, we're going to face a natural disaster uh, challenge uh, that may come to any of our business operation. So we can simulate that situation. We can experiment what will happen in advance so that we can prepare for uh, if the situation, if the, the incidents happens. So we need to anticipate the potential threats that we're going to face and so that we can devise the possible solution to face the incidents. And this also leads, uh, must be implemented. Another thing that must be implemented in any organization or in business especially is to lead understanding in the workplace. For example, if you want to lead understanding in the workplace, you need to be able to address the, each of your team members uh, to understand each other. So it's important to get to know each of the team members properly by having, a, a, for example, you can change uh, the, if the business operation, you can rotate, you do rotation on your business operation so that each of the team members knows what it takes for each position in the business uh, uh, environment. Because now let's say for army, for example, when they are going into the battlefield, they have the, uh, who, uh, they have their, let's say, uh, they have their sharpshooter, for example, they have their uh, tele uh, communication uh, person in charge, they have their uh, Ricky uh, personnel, for example. So each of these, person knows what each of their team members is doing and they believe in them. Not just that, they know what it takes for the sharpshooter to be a sharpshooter. So they understand the what this sharpshooter needs and how the sharpshooter can play it close in the battlefield. So this is why it's important to lead the understanding among the team members in the workplace, not only uh, among the team members about this business, but be, even between the cooperation, the collaboration between the team members is as important as the information that we need about our competitor or our customer and our supplier. So internally, we can say that internal communication is equally important to the external communication. Okay, so the next one is on complexity on the next slide. So for complexity, we want to address to clarity. We want to understand things better. We don't want to cause any confusion or we don't want to be, uh, uh, we don't want to create chaos uh, from the 
complex uh, situation that we are facing. So it's important to check and clarify. The key to gain clarity is to check and clarify. But this is rare in our, uh, this is a challenge in our situation uh, in businesses because sometimes we may not be able to address who do we check, with whom do we need to clarify, who should we ask to clarify things, who will we need to ask to check and balance. So in that context, we somehow need to find a way to face the situation. We need to address the key uh, to clarity by finding the key person or the key situation uh, players, the key stakeholders that we can check and we can clarify to gain complex, uh, to gain clarity to the complex situation that we may face. And also, it's important equally, just like in the uh, uncertainty, we need to communicate, communicate clearly. And here, uh, I would suggest using the RACI matrix because the RACI matrix is about uh, you can address the roles and responsibility in organization, uh, the team members in uh, the team members in any organization. So you can use the RACI matrix to define the roles and responsibilities of the team members properly. And because it's important to not only uh, the communication between the team members need to be uh, on, uh, on point, but also the, they need to know their roles and their responsibility clearly. Because uh, if they, they, the person themselves did not know what are their roles, what are their responsibilities, these are the key, uh, these are the main problem that can bring any organization to the complexity issues and make things uh, even more difficult for the whole team members. Uh, so because using by, have, by having a defined roles and responsibility, you can develop a proper teams, you can promote collaboration even among the teams or between the teams and outside, uh, outside uh, agents or outside key partner. And this can help in problem solving and improve decision making methods uh, so that you can come out with a better decision from time to time and improving the clarity between the team members in the organization, especially in the business organization. Okay, on the next one is on ambiguity. The ambiguous situation, we want it to turn from ambiguous to agility to be agile, the organization, organization or the business in the, uh, the person in the business organization needs to be agile. And in order to get them to be agile, uh, I, I like to take, for example, as a person, for you to be agile is you need to be, uh, we as individual, we need uh, to be flexible, we need to be adaptable and so that we can be agile. If we are not flexible, if we cannot uh, change our, uh, if we are walking like a robot, the things that separate, one of the things that separate human and a robot is because of the agility. Robot is not agile, uh, is not agile because for them to change direction when they, are, now let's say they are walking, they need to uh, they need to stop and turn around then only they can walk but for us human we can change direction almost instantly we can change now let's say we are going forward now let's say we need to turn around and going backward we can just simply turn around so that is one of the wonders of human the god has given us that ability that is agility now that agility comes with our flexibility, the ability of our muscle to be flexible and our mind to be adaptable to face the change that we need in direction. So to promote agility in any organization, we need to empower the team. We need to face, uh, face the facts that in order for any 
uh, organization to be agile, to be able to face and make fast and accurate decision in any situation, you need to empower the, the team members in the organization because they will be able to prepare themselves to alter plans according to this situation. If everything is dictated, now let's say uh, every decision must go through the CEO of your company. That will somehow uh, cause uh, some hiccup in uh, the progress or the improvement of the business operation. So again, uh, you need to be able to offer empowerment to the team members in any business organization so that they be able to make fast and accurate decision according to the situation that they face, but it must be bounded. And for uh, this is also practical to practice job rotation and cross training. So change between them will give them an insight and what is uh, uh, and what is important in terms of job rotation and cross training is we want to generate empathy between the team members because empathy is the key uh, for us to be uh, to be able to uh, to benefit from the flexibility and the adaptability so that we can come up with better decision not only for ourselves but also for organization that we are are representing and in the context of ambiguity to agility you can use agile and kaizen uh, methods to lead and manage the organization the business organization for example uh, so that you can generate agility in the business uh, organization so again uh, in the context of this Embrace an ideas culture where you can compare and you generate uh, change between ideas. The, we call it uh, idea sparring between the team members in the organization. And you encourage and reward the team members accordingly when they are showing a, a good positive improvement uh, for the organization. Okay, so the, to the next slide. Okay, so as a business person, uh, what do we need to do uh, to face in the VUCA world? Uh, the first thing is we need to have a clear objective. What do we want to achieve? What do we want to accomplish uh, as a business person? Because this may sound cliche, but some business are out there to make profit to just gain as may, as big the big as big as bigger uh, as bigger revenue as possible uh, or some another business may have may look at the potential of their organization based on the impact that they bring to the stakeholders especially to the community or the customers that they are serving so what is the objective of the business person or the business because behind every organization every business or every company there's a key person who drive the objective of that organization so what is the objective of the organization what do you want to achieve what is your optimal focus for your organization so in other context because of that, you can generate uh, a confidence uh, in the business uh, decision making and you can be empathetic in the context of delivering what you need to the business. Uh, you need to be able to address uh, to the uh, to the focus to, to the uh, the needs and wants of the, not only your customers but also to your suppliers and all together to the stakeholders that you are serving and also demonstrate uh, integrity uh, in the context of uh, in making decision 
by delivering walking your uh walk the talk delivering what you have promised to deliver so that is a com complex uh, that is an example of demonstrate integrity and also facilitate the realistic expectations because it is important uh not to be uh over promise or not to be not to deliver an under promise uh performance so it's important for us to facilitate realistic expectations because in business you know that for every business decision there's a, a cost and effect for that business decision and also for every products and service that is offered to the market there's price there's a context of uh uh things the resources that the resources that has been spent the effort that has been given to making the delivery of the products or services uh, happen so you need to facilitate realistic expectations with the company and then it's important to be democratic uh, to be flexible in uh, dealing with the uh, key stakeholders in the business and also practice engagement between the team members uh, to the next slide Okay, this is the context on um, in terms of marketing management models and metrics that we can use to implement in uh, businesses in facing the issues of uh, customer or the VUCA world, for example. Uh, to the next slide. Okay, here, uh, these are some of the images that actually I believe everyone have come across somehow to understand that all these businesses uh, doesn't even hold uh, what they are selling. Uh, for example, we take a look for uh, Instagram, they don't even have, they don't even sell camera, they don't even sell images, but they somehow still uh, one of the biggest and uh, ex one of the valued uh, photo company in the world. To the next slide. Okay, so what we can do in addressing the term uh, in the context of uh, VUCA world, uh, we can use this in this context, we, we have source tech model. Source tech model is where you do uh, source tech, uh, represent situation analysis, objectives, and strategy, tactics, action, and control. This is an elaborated, uh, an elaborate uh, explanation uh, from the PDCA, the plan, do, check, act uh, matrix. So the model will be given, uh, for example, first you need to concentrate on doing an uh, the situation analysis in the business context in facing the VUCA era, you can uh, do the situation analysis, analyze where are the companies right now, what is the position, what are the current situation that they are facing, the challenges that, they, that has been uh, disturbing the business operation, for example, and then what do, where do we want to be? That is in uh, objectives. Where do we want to be in the context of uh, achieving our business operation purposes? Uh, we have purposes. We need to have purpose. We need to drive according to the purpose. But what do we want? Where do we want to be in the context of delivering uh, the business uh, purpose? So focusing on the goal uh, that we want to achieve for the business. And then from there, after the analysis that we have conducted, usually the, uh, during this situation, during the situation analysis, we not only analyze in the context of internal company strengths or weaknesses, but also analyzing the uh, potential opportunity and threats that may come from the surrounding uh, situation. So I, I will 
explain a little bit of what we can do to do an analysis on in the context of situation analysis and also on addressing the objective that we want to achieve uh, and then but uh, we go about on the strategy how do we get what we want uh, in the objective for example we want to gain an understanding of the strategy that we can use to implement the objective that we have planned according to the analysis that we have conducted earlier so from this strategy we will be able to as to find and plan the tactics that we want to do now let's say for example we want to go to now let's say as a muslim i want to go to the i want to perform hajj in the haramain in mecca and madinah so that but right now i'm in uh, perlis for example in malaysia so uh, where do i want to be i want to be uh, doing i want to do uh, the hajj i want to perform the pilgrimage so uh, the objective that is the objective so that is the one of the goal but to do that it's not just okay i want to go there because going to the uh, going to mecca going to madinah require effort require resources i need to have a sum of money i need to spend money i need to spend to have a good energy i need to have a good health so that i can perform the hajj properly so that is the strategy how do i get there how do i get how do i have this amount of money so that i can uh, i can uh, spend uh, to get my ticket to the mecca uh, to perform hajj how do how many how much money do i need to take care of my family members back in the in malaysia while i'm doing my hajj and how much money i need to have uh, to spend on all the things that may the ground spending uh, over there so those are the strategy and what do because hajj is is seasonal there's only one hajj every year so i need to plan when i'm going there when the the when plan according to the money according to my health according to the uh, slot given by the saudi uh, government whether they allocated the saudi government will give the uh, placement uh, the number of quota to the government of malaysia so the government of malaysia will will uh, give the slot to potential applicants uh, in malaysia among the muslims in malaysia so it's not that easy so i need to have a strategy that is the strategy and in term of tactics so this are when i go to i know i need this amount of money to be able to perform hajj so what is what do i need to do i may need to uh, have uh, additional stream of income i need to save this much every month for how many long so those are the tactics the specific attainable individual plans about my uh, about my strategy to get to be able to perform hajj in mecca and madinah uh, so those are the tactics and in term of actions because even though we know that we going to save this amount of money now let's say i'm going to save 1000 ringgit measure every month so that i'm able to go for next month uh, next year's haji but still even one that 1000 may not be may, i i may have something that come up now let's say my car broke down and i have to spend to fork out a lot of my savings uh and somehow uh, it affected my saving for that month for example so how do i face that situation how do i improve and how do i uh make sure i achieve what i have planned in the tactics for example okay and then the last one is control it's about monitoring and measure the performance whether we are performing uh in term of what we have planned earlier in achieving the objective we want to achieve so that is an example of source tag model okay to the next one okay this is a product life cycle 
uh, the product life cycle represent about uh, the represents the life cycle for all of the products in the world basically it cannot be applied to a product categories okay uh, each product life cycle graph can only be applied to a single product life cycle now let's take for example uh, an iphone model iphone model the reason now uh, even iphone have uh, iPhone go through the introduction stage. Before introduction stage, there is this development or prototyping stage. Okay. In terms uh, of business, we need to take a look. We need to understand that uh, every product have their own life cycle. That's why iPhone is coming out with new model about every year. Okay. The new model is actually to make sure the the iphone stays for as long as possible in the growth uh growth phase of the four product life cycle stages because you want the product to stay as long as possible in the growth stage you don't want your product to meet uh to uh, meet maturity okay we don't you we don't want any product to reach maturity because when you reach maturity you will face a situation when we call it saturation the product is saturated and it's going to decline so we don't want the product decline we want it to stay for as long as possible in growth because that's where the sale keep on increasing and cost per customer is cheaper the profit is big is uh, the profit is uh, at its maximum during the growth stage and then uh, uh, it, it, the number of customers keep on increasing but at the same time there's a lot more competitors coming in so but it's okay stay for as long as possible in the growth mass, mass, in the growth stage so if you are doing business i don't know uh, if you want to give me if you want to suggest to me uh any any type uh, of your business uh and i can explain how you can practice your uh how you can implement the product life cycle uh context in in the context of your business you can just share with me i don't know your business background but you can share that with me so i can give an example based on your own product but now for the time being i use iphone for example uh, the reason why many of the smartphone companies are having new models almost every year is to make sure the product stays for as long as possible in the growth stage okay it's also the same thing why the car manufacturers coming out with new model of the same brand Sorry. for example uh now let's say uh, i take for example i, I don't know uh, the name of the all car manufacturers for example mazda mitsubishi or even bmw and all car manufacturers coming out with new model for the same brand the same brand for example even if uh, here we have mazda cx5 for example so the same new mazda cx5 coming out every year but that is the reason because they don't come out they don't introduce new brand now instead of cx5 maybe they put it cz5 for example no they don't come out with cz5 they come out with the same mazda cx5 but improve in terms of cosmetic improve in terms of the performance for example because they want to put and make sure the product stays for as long as possible in the growth stage okay so that's that's the key when you are doing business if you are selling for example if you are selling uh now let's say for example if you are selling clothes you are coming up with new clothes see uh, new clothes for uh, for uh every year new design 
because you will need to stay in the growth stage to leverage on the same customer or new customer gaining new customer but on the same context <coughs> okay to the next slide okay this is what analysis okay what, what i'm sharing right now uh the SWOT analysis or also the TAUS analysis and also the product life cycle that I shared earlier can actually be used to identify your situation in the situation analysis on the source tech analysis. So in source tech model, you can do the situation analysis using the SWOT analysis. You can also use uh, in in understanding your product or service, you can also use uh, and solve uh, product had, uh, product metrics and solve metrics to understand your where your product is actually, or you can use the strategic business unit, strategic business unit uh, metrics to analyze your product. So here we take a look on the internal, the strengths and weaknesses represent the internal capability and internal incapability of businesses while the opportunity and threats represent the challenges and uh, opportunities that the world have to offer to you as a business for example the economic or political climate uh, the ex uh, external factors the raw abundant raw materials because okay thing is uh one thing that uh, any single variable that is opportunities to one organization or one person can actually be a threat to another uh i can the example i can give you an example for example the plastic pollution for example Plastic pollution is a threat to the plastic manufacturers. But the same thing is actually an opportunity to the uh, disposable, uh, to the organic disposable packaging business or factories. Uh, it is an opportunity. So now let's say if Indonesia is implementing a new uh, a new law that stops the consumer from using the plastic bags uh, or plastic bottles uh, irresponsibly the, that law can be a threat to plastic bottle and plastic bags manufacturer but the same law is actually an opportunity to other alternatives that is uh, other alternatives to the plastic bag and the plastic bottle manufacturing so it's also the same thing a strength for one person or for one business is another and is a weaknesses or is a weakness to another business so it's not a one sided uh, issues you need to address because one opportunity can be a threat to other which means you will have uh, potential competitors but one uh, weaknesses can also be a potential uh, threats in some way or another so you need to be able to address uh, this better and for opportunities and threats we can take a look on the next slide if i'm not mistaken to understand it better the pastel analysis yes so you can use this uh, uh, pastel analysis to take a look and address the <coughs> the opportunities and threats uh, in the context of SWOT analysis uh, the, so you can find the variables or the potential 
uh, factors affecting in terms of opportunities, in terms of threats in the SWOT analysis using the pastel, uh, the, the pastel uh, metrics. So we can to, take a look on the government policy, for example, for political, environmental laws, terrorism and military consideration, labor laws, or in terms of economic, we can take a look on the GDP, the economic growth, inflation rate, uh, the uh, uh, per employment, for example. Or in terms of social, we can take a look on the population growth uh, for the age distribution in a country, or even on the demographics of the country and cultural trends or facts that is uh, influencing the countries, for example. And in terms of technology, the, we can take a look on the maturity of the technology or the copyright infringement potential uh, of piracy, for example. Uh, so these are the things that we can take a look on technological. In terms of environmental, uh, we can take a look on climate and weather, potential uh, natural disaster. We can, take, we can also take a look on uh, carbon footprint issues, for example and the pollution in terms of pollution of greenhouse gas so these are the things that under environmental and in terms of legal we can take a look on equal opportunities between gender for example or even between the native uh, and the native and the countries uh, uh, diverse community and also on the competitive legislation that we have in the countries and also the consumer rights and laws, for example. So those are the things. These six uh, contexts give you an idea on what you can take a look to put it, uh, on your opportunity or your threats in the, uh, in the SWOT analysis that you can do for the business. So all this are used for situation analysis. So by understanding the, the situation better, you can come out with potent, uh, you can have a clear objective to achieve the goals and missions of the company. Okay, the next one. Okay, Porter's five process is a practical model or practical matrix uh, we can use to analyze uh, competitors uh, to do a competitor analysis. Because for Porter's five for Michael E. Porter's five process, they take a look on the first the rivalry among the competing firm, the current company that is competing, uh, and then uh, for example, if you are taking we're going to take a look on the smartphone industry, for example. The in smartphone industry, we have I uh, we have Apple, we have Samsung, we have LG, for example, and we have now we have a uh, new uh, competitor. We have Oppo. Uh, if in Malaysia, I don't know in other countries, but. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it should be the same, among the same. We have Oppo, uh, we have Huawei. Uh, so those are the competitors in the uh, smartphone industry currently. And also, in the context of smartphone uh, industry, we have a potential threats of new, new entrants. But for smartphone industry, threats of new entrants may be lower because it's not as uh, difficult as, or it's not easy for any bis new businesses, new brand to penetrate the smartphone business or smartphone industry. Because you can't simply start a new business, uh, start a new brand of smartphone, uh, just like uh, you start a new business of selling, uh, selling kueh or bakso on the roadside, because that is, Low, because it requires a huge amount of capital and also there's some requirements that you need to fulfill to be able to come up with new business uh, in the smartphone industry. So uh, this there's the, the threat of new entrants in the context of smartphone business is low. But 
uh, now let's take a look on the threat of substitution. Uh, threat of substitution is when you are facing uh, a challenge in terms of substitute products. But for smartphones, there's no actual substitute products. There are substitute products for smartphone, for example. The substitute for smartphone is a tablet. A substitute to smartphone is a laptop or a personal computer. Those are the substitute. But the threat of substitute products of, for the smartphone industry is, we can say is a, is uh, uh, somehow low and not uh, not big of an issue because people still prefer smartphones over using uh, laptop, personal computer, or tablets. But still, those are the threats of the substitution. Okay, but in the context for buyer power, the buyer have a good bargaining power. We are talking about purchasing power, bargaining power of the buyer because we have there's a lot of customer for smartphone business uh, and they can change from a wide uh, variety of uh, brands for example Xiaomi they can choose uh, to buy from uh, Huawei instead of from Apple for example so those are the issues on buyer power purchasing power uh, bargaining power of buyer and the next one is bargaining power of supplier now in the context of smartphone industry supplier have a huge bargaining power because they control basically uh, because the raw material is limited so increase in raw material will affect it so the supplier have a control over the uh, supply or uh, the, the the decision in the business for that in the context of uh, smartphone industry, the supplier have a huge bargaining power over the businesses, uh, as well as the uh, bargaining power between the uh, customer, because the customer can choose to buy on not to buy, and they have a wide variety of option to choose from. Now, this we are talking about. Uh, now, let's say we are talking about Apple, for example, but still even though uh, we, we don't address we have we did not talk about uh, apple products or iphone in the context of the brand the brand capability we are talking about the business capability so we can use this also to do the uh, situation analysis so that we gain a better understanding on our competitors because we want to know it is we want to know who are the competitors, who are the substitute products, what are the substitute products to our product or the, our business, and how about our supplier and our buyer in terms of their bargaining power. Okay, so the next one, the next slide. Okay, this is uh, in terms of growth share metrics. We want to uh, be, we want to be able to understand uh, about the products or the uh, services that we offer in terms of uh, our business operation. So we can use this uh, metrics so that we can understand uh, between the market growth rate and also the relative market share that we have. So we can put focus on our business operation in terms of we can put better emphasis on our products and services. So now for every business we have, uh, we sometimes for business, they have a lot of products and services. They don't just have a single product of businesses. So using this gross share metrics, you can put the strategic business unit that we have. For example, now, Let's take, for example, uh, in University Malaysia Police, for example, we have several programs that we have, uh, we offer to the public. Uh, now, let's say in Faculty of Business and Communication, we have a degree in Engineering Entrepreneurship. Uh, we have degree in International Business. We also have a degree in New Media Communication. 
So we can put all these uh, programs as a strategic business unit based on the four quadrants that we have in this matrix. So now let's say if the program have relative market share, high relative market share, which means uh, the market is rooting for the, uh, the product or services. Now let's say one of the program is one, uh, now let's say one of the program is the hottest, hot selling uh, program we have in uh, Unimap. So, uh, and also there are potential uh, growth rate in the future. So we can put it in stars quadrant where the, it have high growth market, uh, high market rate, market share in terms of market share and also high growth rate in the future. So it is stars. For stars, we put uh, and invest for as long as possible and we use a uh, product life cycle to prolong the potential period of this product to stay in stars quadrant. Now let's say one of the program have low uh, growth rate, which means in the future, the, uh, the cost may not be relevant at all, but currently it have high market share. That is the cash cow. So for cash cow, you keep on milking the cash cow. So you generate cash to reinvest and reinvest, or you can basically uh, reinvest and improve so to, for it, because you want it to become a leading product uh, in the markets that are already mature. That's why we want to stay for as long as possible in growth because we don't want any products to reach maturity because uh, it, once they reach maturity, they will either become a question mark or they will be dogs where it have low growth rate and which means that it have no future and also low market share. Low market share means mean they don't have, uh, not many customers are looking for it anymore. And also in the future, future outlook for that product is uh, also low. So that is dogs. But for uh, question marks, it's different case because question mark can become either dogs or it can become stars based on uh, the understanding and how uh, the investment and the investment on the said product is, uh, is done. Now, let's say the companies invest properly in the question marks, it can become a star. Because in terms of question mark, it has low market share, but the potential growth for market, uh, the potential growth for uh, question mark is good. One of the product that used to be a question, question marks is instant three in one, uh, three in one uh, coffee. Previously, uh, during the Actis, if I'm not mistaken, during the Actis, uh, three in one, uh, coffee packet is actually a question mark because it have low market share, but it have huge potential for the future. But because during that time, those who make coffee using an instant coffee, three in one coffee packet is considered lazy. So that's why the market is low, the people don't buy. But when people are busy, they don't have time to brew their coffee anymore. They don't have time to properly make the coffee beans uh, uh, anymore. They use the packet three in one coffee, instant coffee to make. So it becomes a star during that time. But currently now it, it looks like they are leveraged. So I would say the coffee three in one coffee packet is uh, cash cows. And currently the coffee, uh, the brewed coffee industry is uh, on the star, for example, it has high market share, but it somehow maybe uh, can become cash cow because one, it just, it is a trend, it's good. It is a global trend, but somehow something is changing. So the how we go about that situation, 
we need to address it properly. Now, let's say there will be an issue on the coffee farm, for example. Let's say a disaster, a natural disaster affecting the coffee farm. So the coffee farm no longer producing, um, no longer be able to produce a good amount of coffee beans to uh, to cater the market. So it can turn things around. Uh, so that's those are example of uh, VUCA elements that can affect the business operation that we can use this actually we can use the gross share mat matrix so that we can make better decision in our business okay so to the next one okay uh, so before we finish I would like to show to you the, uh, about this project prioritization matrix because this uh, we need to address for every decision that we make. We need to be able to address the complexity or the effort we need to put on the project or the, the idea, the strategy that we plan, the tactics that we intend to carry on. Uh, to the business value. If the business value is good, which means uh, it is easy, uh, it is easy to do uh, with minimal effort, but it gave a huge value to the business. So that is an easy win. High value, low complexity. So do this first. But for things like that have high value and high complexity, high complexity you need to address uh, and according to capability, your capability and your situation. Because uh, we may not be able to do everything. So we need to be able to prioritize accordingly. So for uh, low value and low complexity, you can put this in a bin. Or you can uh, plan for to do this later on. But for project that is low value and high complexity, you can deprioritize or you can throw this uh, project or idea uh, straight away because it will consume much of your time and effort and resources while it's only bring low value. Okay, so these are how you can, this is, these are the guides how we can go about in making decisions in prioritizing the plans or the tactics that we want to carry because you might have a business uh, but uh, that business need to be able to come up with better decision uh, and you need to prioritize it accordingly okay so to the next one okay so that would be all from me i uh, would like to Thank you very much again to uh, Ms. Novita and Stakeholder University for having me. So maybe we can open for the floor for the Q&A session. Thank you so much for Mr. Jureyet for giving information. And then for ladies and gentlemen, we will continue to question and answer session. If you will ask something, you can raise your hand or you can write in room chat. Thank you. First, uh, maybe I will start with question from Zoom chat. This is question from Mr. Aska Nahya Amanta. How to respond to Fucha so that the business continues to grow and what challenges do company need to anticipate living in the current, current Fusa era? Thank you. Um. Uh, in terms of response, uh, we need to be able to, uh, just like I've shared earlier, uh, you can use Buka Prime to address to the uh, challenges uh, from the Buka uh, standpoint. And then you can, the, the first key, I would say the first key to respond to Buka is for us as human to be human and be empathetic. We need to be able to to put uh, to have an insight in other people's shoes, unless uh, because that's the first thing. Unless we be able, 
if we able to see things from different perspective and not just from our, our own, that will make us a better person, which indirectly will help our business to grow better. Because many of today's businesses that strive and they're striving and improving during the pandemic era, for example, is because they put uh, an empathy relationship with their stakeholders. They focus on how they can deliver better customer service even during the pandemic situation while not affecting the current business operation and the stakeholders. So those are the things we can anticipate, we can plan, uh, but uh, if we have empathy, empathy is the key power uh, the, is the key superpower for us so that we can uh, grow and anticipate what will be, uh, happen in the VUCA era. Okay, thank you for answering. And we have five questions again. This is from Miss Juliana. Is there any type of leadership that fits the VUCA era? Thank you. Uh, I don't really get but if there's any types of leaderships uh, uh the type of leadership that we can have is actually uh, a kind of leadership that is empathetic but at the same time uh is uh uh yeah we we, we need to be we need to have a strong and compelling uh, leadership we need to be able to lead. For example, if we are going to lead our family, at some point in, uh, in the context when we deal with our family, we need to be flexible. But uh, at some point, we need to be fixed and we need to be stringent in the decision making. So that is the kind of relationship, uh, or sorry, that is the kind of leadership that we need and again, going back to my point, to the previous question, we need to be empathy to, of others. We need to be able to focus to other people uh, while addressing and achieving the goals of our business uh, objective. Uh, that is the kind of leadership that should fit in the VUCA era because you cannot just think about yourself. You cannot just think about the companies as your own, but also the company uh, is partly owned by the key person, uh, by the customers, the suppliers who have direct influence uh, with the business operation. Hopefully that helps to understand. Okay, thank you for explaining. And then we have question from Miss Fabriana. How to respond to Fucha so that the business continue to grow for people who are not teach savvy? Thank you. It's okay for the people who are not tech savvy, maybe uh, those, uh, the elders who are not tech savvy, it's okay not to be tech savvy because Buka has nothing to do with technology. Although technology can be some of the challenges, but technology is the change agent that can help us uh, to achieve uh, the, uh, to be able to address the VUCA uh, elements that can affect us. So now let's say uh, for the businesses to face the, because if we are talking about business as a whole, so there's a lot of business. Now let's say if we are talking about businesses who are going to do, because uh, now let's say, for all the people who are not tech savvy, may not be able to order uh, things from the internet, may not be able to order things from the, the apps using their smartphone. But there's, there must be a way for us uh, to get in touch with them because even though they not be able to use the apps, for example, they can still uh, get in touch using phone. They can still get in touch using the short, short messaging uh, services, SMS, or they can even use a paper, a form uh, to be able to get to reach and complete and achieve what they, what they intend to do. So again, being empathy so that you know how the, the behavior or the way 
this uh, other people think, other people, uh, the challenges other people are facing will be a key to respond to the business for especially uh, in the context of uh, non tax savvy uh, individuals because we need to understand them better for us to be able to share with them about the technology that we have or uh, if not uh, our technology is useless uh, to them Okay, thank you for explanation. Hopefully, Miss Febri can understand the explain from Mr. Jureid. Yeah, and then the, the next question, uh, this is from Miss Hori Zahra. Is there an impact Ukraine conflict and Taiwan conflict in the business world? Yes, there's direct, oh. uh, direct relation between the Ukraine and Taiwan conflict to the business world. For example, Ukraine known as the one of the biggest suppliers, uh, the biggest supply of uh, wheat to the world. Uh, so it somehow affect the price of wheat, of the flour, and also the conflict have caused the food shortages around the world. And in context of Taiwan conflict, for example, because Taiwan is one of the uh, Taiwan is an entrepreneurial country uh, because majority of the Taiwanese are entrepreneur. So many of the technology are coming from Taiwan. So it did somehow affect it uh, in the context of supply, in the context of uh, raw material, and also in the context of uh, technological advancements. Those are the things. Uh, affected by the conflicts happening in these two countries. Okay, thank you for your explain. And then we still have two questions again from audience in room chat. This is question from Mr. Fahrul. In your presentation about how can business survive in a fuchsia world, it's written despite being in fee table, its effect can be lessened. May I know what if What's effect you mean, sir? Thank you. Okay. Uh, it, the the effect that can be lessened is the effect of uh, VUCA elements. Now, the effect of uh, vulner, the the effect of vulnerable, uncertain, complex, and ambiguity can be lessened because. Uh, one of the elements are uh, vulnerable. Now, let's say in the context of a uh, pandemic, for example, uh, you cannot avoid, you cannot run from the pandemic. It is happening. Uh, it is affecting everyone around the world, but you can control it. And how do you control it? By understanding it better, understanding the COVID-19 better, understand, understanding how it influences, how it spreads, uh, to from each and every countries that is affected and how it affects the individual affected by it. Uh, those are things I mean. So you cannot run away from a natural disaster. You cannot run away from uh, any uh, uh, hurricane or any uh, problem, uh, tsunami, for example. We cannot run away from it. But we can lessen the potential effect of it. How do we face that? How do we avoid the same situation, the same uh, effect to be the same? Now, let's say if it's ever happening again, we need to be able to lessen the impact of uh, tsunami uh, to our world, especially for those, uh, let's say, fishermen. Uh, we need to help. Uh, so that's what I mean. Uh, by lessen the effect it can impl uh, employ on the businesses. Okay, thank you for the detail explain. And then we have a question from Mr. Rizky Wahyu Aditya. How big are the opportunities? I'm sorry. How big are the opportunity for countries in Southeast Asia, especially Indonesia and Malaysia, in the future technology business competition? Thank you, sir. Uh, we both uh, have a 
big potential since we are uh, actually Malaysia and Indonesia one of the, the common things that we are having right now is we are having a good uh, internet connection and we have a good uh, internet literacy in both countries many of the uh, youngsters especially and even uh, the uh, booming generate the generation uh, the previous generation our parents generation also have a good understanding and capable of using the internet uh, better so in term of technology we if i would say in if we are putting uh, countries in the four uh, gross metrics uh, sorry uh, the gross metric i would say we are in the uh, stars uh, placement but in order to to capitalize it we need to have a better uh, cooperation even between the countries because we both have a good coordination we both have a good uh, uh, in terms of business capability so by collaborating and cooperating together to achieve the to capitalize on the opportunities that we have lies upon us uh, we will be able to become world leader in terms of business uh, or technological uh, advanced uh, businesses in the world okay thank you for your explain and then we have last question from audience in uh, youtube this is from mr ahyadi how come we stay safe in this era if suddenly interest starts down? Have uh, have you imagined about this year? Thank you. Uh, how do we? Sorry, uh, I, I may not be able to get the understanding. How yeah. come? How come how we stay it? safe in this era if suddenly internet internet shuts down? Have you have you imagined about this? uh how do we stay safe in this era we are ah, okay the first thing is this the challenge of our world right now uh first yes we are facing a buka and buka situation buka elements but in this technological era it's not about uh it's not about the challenge that we face uh in terms of we don't have information we don't have it's not we we have a lots of information we have a lots of uh uh we have a lot of access we capable of a lot of things but the challenge the main challenge for us is to prioritize what we want to achieve prioritize what we want to uh accomplish because we may not be able to focus uh, our talent, our effort, and our resources properly unless uh, we able to filter the information that we have. In terms of whether the internet shuts down or not, we will still be able to find a way because human will... Communication is essential to us as a human. We need to communicate we are uh, in nature naturally we want to communicate so even if the internet shuts down we will find a way to communicate with each other maybe we go back to writing a letter maybe we go back using a signal uh, for example but we will be able to come out with solutions that we have but for that to happen we need to be able to have a vast information uh, on us. We need to have an information, but not just any information. We must know what are the priority, the important information that we have so we can filter accordingly and we make decision uh, properly. So that would be my answer on this. Okay, thank you so much for Mr. Jureid. Yeah, before we closing this event, let us take a group photo together. Yeah, for this photo session, we'll be handled with Miss Webby. The time is yours. Thank you.
Oke, okay. bagi yang belum mengaktifkan kamera, bisa dibuka terlebih dahulu kameranya ya, agar kita bisa foto bersama. Mbak, translate mungkin biar Mr. Curich. Bahasanya sendiri. Yeah. Oke, okay. okay, saya hitung dari satu, dua, tiga. Oke, okay, sekali lagi. Satu, dua, tiga. Oke, okay, terima kasih. Terima kasih. Thank you very much. See you around. Yeah. Uh, before... <laughs> Before we continue the final part of today, we would like to thanks the important representative from University of Malaysia Perlis. So I would like to thanks all the participants for attending this visiting lecture. Yeah. Before I close this event, from speaker will say something before maybe. Oh, I think not. No. Thank you very much. That's all. Yeah. Finally, we come. To the end of visiting lecture today, we would like to say thanks again for Mr. Jureits Ibnu Rahni for their information. Yeah, Thank you for sharing your knowledge. We hope this information will be beneficial for all audience. And I hope we can meet again in other event in the future. Also, I would like to thank all the participants for attending this visiting lecture. At least, we hope to have more collaboration in the future. Yeah. The visiting lecture for today will be, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you so much for all participants and Mr. Jurites especially. Thank you so much and see you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, thank you so much for all participants. See you soon. Bye. Uh, Mbak, suara aku masih kemuyut. Yeah. Eh, bagi yang belum absen, bisa saya tunggu terlebih dahulu ya. Silahkan absen. Link absen sudah berada di kolom chat. Oke, saya share sekali lagi. Oke, saya hitung dari 5 ya. 5, 4, 3, Dua, satu. Oke, okay, terima kasih. Acara saya akhiri. Selamat sore. Selamat